Well, give us very quickly as a sense of where the Malaysian economy is in your view. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, for Malaysia, I think if we look at what's happening today, first quarter, our numbers are strong in GDP growth uh, terms. Well, we grew by 4.25%, uh, so we should be uh, on target to achieve what we have forecasted to be around 4 to 5% in terms of GDP growth. Uh, but what's more important is we are ensuring that the newly launched plans, you know, we launched the new national industrial master policy, uh, we launched the national energy transition roadmap, and two days ago the Prime Minister also uh, talked about the midterm review of our 12 Malaysia plan. Uh, so we have, under, under the economy Mandani uh, focus, uh, we are going to target Malaysia to be the top 30 countries in the world in terms of GDP. Uh, and expecting a growth of around 6% per annum uh, to achieve that. So, Minister, you, know, you need, of course, perhaps uh, some luck in trying to navigate what's going on with the slowdown in China. How does the slowdown in China manifest itself in, oh, yes. in your economic figures? Yeah, well, China remains a major trading partner for Malaysia. In fact, it's just the largest trading partner for Malaysia um, and also one of the top three source of FBI for Malaysia. Uh, and therefore, any impact or any slowdown in China will have uh, an impact to Malaysia and, in fact, to the region because China is also the largest trading partner for ASEAN. Uh, and if you see uh, the global trade numbers, uh, this year WTO is forecasting uh, global trade to moderate uh, to 1.7 percent yeah, compared to what it was uh, last year, which was 2.7 percent. So Malaysia, uh, as an open economy, you know, our trade to GDP numbers is between 130 to 140 percent, will definitely feel some of the slowdown or moderation in global trade. Uh, and especially in China, um, we, of course, uh, there are all these challenges, but there are also opportunities when it comes to the challenges. So we are seeing the realignment uh, of supply chain, uh, because what's happening, uh, the trade war, uh, or the tightening of monetary policy, inflation, uh, has actually benefited our region, and ASEAN in particular, and Malaysia as well. And if you look at the, the numbers, uh, uh, if you look at FDI, for example, the FDI for 2022, uh, global FDI went down by 12%, uh, but uh, the, global, the FDI into the region, into ASEAN, actually went up uh, by 5%. Uh, so we're bucking the yeah. trend. Uh, and what's more important uh, is that uh, we continue to focus uh, on the execution of some of the policies uh, so that we can mitigate the impact uh, of yeah. uh, slowing of global trade. Minister, we only got a very short time left. Uh, you had approved investments of what uh, about yes. 71 billion ringgit in the first quarter. How's yeah. the rest of it been? I think that's about 15 billion US. How's the rest of uh, the year been so far? And very quickly, and how much luck have you had in people such as uh, Tesla, BYD, Mercedes, and the like to set up in Malaysia itself too? Yes, uh, thank you very much. So quickly, actually, yes, the investment numbers have gone up. It's gone up by 60%. Uh, what's more important is that it's not just FDI that's coming in, it's also DDI. When you look at the breakdown between FDI and DDI, it's about 50% FDI and 50% DDI, which is domestic direct investment. And in the sectors of automotive, uh, we are going to push very hard on this, especially on EV, uh, because Malaysia, in terms of the back-end semiconductor and also on the front-end, uh, is a major player uh, in the global uh, uh, space. So this will definitely have a positive spillover uh, when we venture uh, into automotive, especially when you look at uh, electrical vehicles. In about 30 seconds, what have you seen in terms of the decoupling or de-risking taking place in rejigging of supply chains? How has this manifested itself in Malaysia? Yes, um, definitely we are actually, like I said, there are challenges in the longer term, but in the short term, we need to be opportunistic uh, and there are opportunities and we are seeing the realignment of the supply chain coming into, Asia, into Asia, uh, to ASEAN. Uh, Malaysia is also benefiting from the Andes where we can see the numbers uh, in terms of FDI coming in. People are looking at reshoring, French shoring, you know, some of course onshoring, but uh, net net uh, ASEAN has been a net beneficiary uh, of uh, the realignment of the supply chain.